Thank you very much, House Chair. As the EFF, we have raised our concerns about how the Joint Standing Committee on Financial Management of Parliament engage and process issues. Before we can fully engage, Chair, with the administration of Parliament as a whole, we must first have an orderly committee. Yesterday in the committee, we adopted minutes of the meetings from July 2019 up to the end of July 2020 in one meeting. Minutes of the previous, me minutes of the previous meetings must be adopted in the next meeting when we can all still clearly remember what was discussed in the previous meeting, not a year later. Otherwise, how do we deal with matters arising, check progress, and professionalize the committee work when we do not adopt the minutes of the previous meeting? Chair, on a more substantive matter, it is concerning that as parliament, we are being dragged into the misguided ongoing austerity politics of the ruling party, and we have not been able to demonstrate our independence as a legislative arm of the state. We are behaving as if we report to the president, and we do not. The recent budget cut of around 3% on all expenditure items are not guided by any scientific expenditure review. Instead, we receive instruction from the National Treasury, like we are some Schedule three public entity listed at the back of the PFMA and not Parliament. IT and communications budgets were cut by approximately 3%. At a time when, as members of parliament, we are using more data and we are holding meetings through the visual platform, but the budget was cut. Why not cut travel by 20%? Because members of parliament were not traveling to parliament during lockdown. There is no common sense guiding austerities. The other issue, House Chair, which we still need to deal with urgently, is the wasteful and unnecessary expenditure on renovations of parliament villages. When we met with the Speaker of Parliament, the Chief Whips, we all agree that instead of spending billions through corrupt and inflated contracts, we have agreed that mem members of parliament should get a market-related allowance instead of providing official housing residents. It is more cost-efficient and eliminates unnecessary administration, maintenance, and refurbishment costs, and this will lead to substantial savings in the long term. But nothing concrete has been done in the first quarter. Instead, we see tenders being awarded for renovations and members receiving letters to move out of their allocated houses speedily. We are still not getting details on what goods and services are Parliament paying for and who are the suppliers. Such details should form the basis of committee work. But we have been asking for this information since the fifth Parliament and we still do not have it. Why is it so difficult about a list of suppliers, goods and services they supplied, how much we paid them and how they were appointed? As things stand, House Chair, the work of the Standing Committee on Financial Management of Parliament leaves so much to be desired, and as members of Parliament, we cannot rely on this report to hold the executive accountable. We therefore reject this report. I thank you, Chairperson.